Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. Um, today I am presenting a way of filtering a database using the data advanced filter feature. This example that I am presenting here was in fact presented by uh, Mr. Dinesh Takiar in his YouTube channel. I made a comment that I think we could do the same thing uh, using another tool and Mr. Takiar invited me to uh, share that uh, idea with the community. So here is the video. Is This is just another way of doing, um, achieving the same uh, results using a different tool. Okay, so we have this uh, set of data, uh, which is in fact the same data that Mr. Mr. Takiar had in his video. And the goal is to filter this uh, data set uh, by a start and end date and also by a product name. So, uh, for example, if I'm looking for uh, all the entries with a, uh, i7 Intel CPU as a product name and uh, with a date uh, in between the first and the last day of March 2012, I should be able to find um, this entry and that's the only one here so let's test this um, i will go to the sheet 2 where i want the results to be pasted and i'll create here um, one cell to indicate the start date another one to indicate the end date and uh, let's say that now I'm putting 2012, March 31st, and then here 2012, March 31st. Okay. Um, let's put here uh, the criteria, criteria that we are using. Um, to use the tool data advanced filter here, we need to use the same um, header designations that we have here. So I'm going to copy these two for now. I'm going to paste it here. And because uh, we are using, uh, giving two uh, different criteria for the purchase date, I'm going to uh, copy this here. And what is our criteria? Well, uh, it is the following, uh, we, and we need to write it uh, like this. I want that the purchase date is greater or equal than this one here. And at the same time, I want that the dates we filter are smaller or equal than the date in here. Uh, we can see that Excel converts the dates to this format. Uh, it's okay and I want that the product name uh, that uh, needs to be filtered is this one. So, okay, so here is our criteria. And where do I want the data to appear? I want, and I need to copy the headers, and I want them to show here. Because I already have the product name there, I can eliminate it from here, and I could, for example, just put the quantity, or I can choose whichever um, columns I want to be displayed. I don't have to put them all. So let's start using the advanced filter tool. Uh, first thing, we need to click outside of where we have text and start uh, activating the tool from the sheet where I want to paste the results in. Um, so, and I'm going to record the macro so that we then can use it later. Okay, so advanced, copy to another location. Where is my range? To filter here. Where is my criteria range? The criteria is defined here and where I want to copy the results to. I want to copy them here. So I go OK 
and here we have our result the only entry in that uh, data set for that product in March uh, so for example um, if we have if we had chosen this product we have two entries here one is May 2012 the other one is March 2012 so let's try that and I'll stop the macro so copy and then uh, put the name of the product here and um, let's say the dates are January 1st to end of December of the year 2012 so Alt F11 to open developer window and uh, here under modules we have module 1 with the macro that we have just recorded uh, we don't need this so let's say what let's see what happens if we we don't need this let's see what happens if we run this macro let's press f5 and here we have the two results that uh, obey to this uh, criteria okay so how can we make this uh, dynamic because let's say that now I have an entry here for this same product uh, let's say and uh, the product will be this one and I'm just copying these numbers doesn't matter and so now I have one more entry um, that should appear here when we run the macro however when we run the macro it doesn't come up and why because of course we are defining our range from a1 to e9 in sheet 1 and it doesn't it's this range here it doesn't go down enough to find this other range this other this new entry there are uh, uh, different ways that we could solve these. Uh, I'm going to show you one of them. Uh, so if we go Control T, we create a table. We say OK, has headers. We now have this table. I'll take banded rows out. Um, and this table has a name. It's called Table 1. We can change the name. Let's call it um, All Data. Um, and here for our um, macro we need to indicate the entire range including the headers so I'm going to formulas and I'll create a new range name that I will call all data with headers um, and I'll I say that the data is here so it refers to the data in this automatic way um, saying that it's the table all data including all the details uh, that is including the headers as well as the data and uh, now every time I enter a new uh, I make a new entry to the to the data set all will be included in this new name okay let's close so going back to our macro here in our range if we replace this with this let's see what happens going back here run the macro the new entry uh, appears here okay um, how can we make this more useful now well we would like to be able to change this more easily change the product name so we need a dynamic uh, drop down here um, I'm going to use a trick 
that I learned from Hosda Soleil uh, recently in one of his uh, recent videos. Um, what we'll do is we'll um, click somewhere here, go to data. This is for those who have Excel 2016 or uh, Office 365 that have the get data, the get data and get and transform data um, set of tools. If not, you need to add uh, the Power Query uh, heading. Okay, so let's go get data from table, this table where we are now. It brings up this new window uh, that shows me the table that I'm using as a source. And what I want to do is I want to find to only collect the names of the products. So I remove other columns. And now here, remove rows, I want to remove the duplicates. So now we have only the products uh, one time, written one time. So now I go close and load to, and I'm going to say existing worksheet, and I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to choose a new worksheet, and paste as a table, and OK. So it creates a sheet two, three to the left. I'm just going to drag it here. This is a new table with, who's, who, that has his name, all data two. Uh, we can use this data or we could change it. But just let's, let's just use that. And um, we can now go here, create a new name. Let's say product list and the product list I want it to be this part here of this table so it already understands that it's that table all data too product name comes from the header of the table it's a table with only one column um, okay product list is our new name so here in sheet 2, I'm going to this cell and I'm going to data, data validation, list, product list, and equal here. Okay, so now I have all the products available here. What happens if now I go and I enter a new product here? Let's say everything was the same, but here I enter a new product called test. Will it appear here? No, because we need to refresh this here. So once we refresh it, and we can use also the sort to make it um, alphabetically sorted, once we refresh now the name should be available here okay and if i run the macro here we go we have our new entry march 5 2012 well uh just to end this i would probably indicate here that uh, this is a, an area where the user needs to enter some data so I would I like highlight that and um, I would also copy the format to here so that we have we see this clearly the cells where we want to um, enter data and we could also put this white to make uh, the sheet more 
clear then you can protect the sheet protect the cells that you don't want to be disrupted and so let's just insert the button associated with this macro let's say filter database and that's it um, let's test it one more time let's say I want I add a new product here called test 2 uh, March 5 all the same I need to refresh this to get my data available my new product name available so if I come here it's here if I use this date I find everything is equal so you cannot see the difference let's say this is 2012 March 25 okay March 25 doesn't come up because of the end date so now if we go and put 31st and run here is our entry okay I hope uh, you found this somehow useful uh, let me know in your comments any ideas or suggestions there's a lot of ways that you can do this and I would love to hear from you thank you